Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and this is AP Physics Essentials video 98. It's on the continuity equation, which is really an application of the conservation of mass in fluids. So if we have a fire hose, the mass that goes in one side of the fire hose is equal to the mass that comes out the other side. Seems pretty intuitive. But what happens if we change the diameter of that fire hose? What if we put a nozzle on the front of it? The same mass has to go through, but since we've restricted the area, we're going to increase the velocity. And that's the continuity equation, which is simply a conservation of mass in fluids. And you'll see it in one of two ways. You'll see it represented as the mass flow rate or the volume or volumetric flow rate. If we're looking at the mass flow rate, this is what the equation looks like. And so it looks a little scary, but it's really not that bad. On the left side, we're going to have somewhere in the fluid before that's one, and then somewhere in the fluid after. And so the three parts are the density of the fluid, the area, cross-sectional area of the fluid, and then the velocity of the fluid itself. Now, if you think about water, its density is not gonna vary as it's moving through a pipe, and so lots of times you'll see it represented as the volume flow rate. We've gotten rid of the density, and so it's simply the cross-sectional area times the velocity. And so an example of that, let's say we have cross-sectional area that's very, very large right here, and a low velocity, what happens as we decrease the cross-sectional area? We should see an increase in the velocity. And this is a PHET simulation that shows that, again, A1 times V1, or the cross-sectional area times the velocity before, equals the cross-sectional area times the velocity after. And so if we were to grab a flux meter and just measure what the cross-sectional area is in this pipe, you'll see that the area is going to be 10 meters squared. If I measure the speed, it's going to be 0.5 meters per second. And so A times V equals 5. What happens if I change the area where the area is now 1 meter per second? We're going to see a velocity of 5 because 1 times 5 is 5. What would happen if I were to give you a totally different um, cross-sectional area, let's say the cross-sectional area at this point is 5, then we should spe see a speed of 1. And so once you know the cross-sectional area and the velocity in any part of that hose, you could calculate it anywhere else, as long as we have consistent density in the fluid itself. And so you might see a continuity equation like this. Water flows through a fire hose with a diameter of 7.5 centimeters. They're giving you the velocity at 4.0 meters per second, and you need to calculate the velocity coming out if we restrict the size of the nozzle to 2.3 centimeters. And so we're going to use the continuity equation. A1V1 equals A2V2. What's going to be my area? Well, I know my diameter here, but that doesn't give me the area. I'm going to have to use a little geometry to figure that out. So I know the area. I know the velocity. I know the area coming out of the nozzle, but we're going to solve for V2. So if I write out the formula, we're going to use pi r squared to calculate that cross-sectional area, where r1 is going to be the radius in the fire hose and R2 is going to be the radius in the nozzle itself. If you look at me working this out, I had to take this centimeters and convert it to meters, so that'd be 0 0.075 meters. And then since the radius is half of the diameter, that's where I'm getting this radius here, and this is the radius as we as we leave. And so I solve it and I get a velocity 2 of around 43 meters per second. And so it's going 4 meters per second around 10 miles an hour in the hose, but it's coming out around 100 miles an hour. And so did you learn to make calculations of flow based on the continuity equation? I hope so, and I hope that was helpful.